Our next speakers are an incredible couple um, that have been another source of absolute inspiration for myself and many within this room um, for everything that they do. Um, I don't think that they need too much more of an introduction. It's Dr. David and Jen Unwin. Wow, amazing. What an amazing bunch of people you all are. It's fantastic to see everybody here on the... This is probably summer. It's the hottest day of the year. You're missing summer to be here. And also a big shout out to all the dads in the audience, particularly yes. Sam. <laughs> yeah. Sam, Father's Day. Giving up your Father's Day to be here. But I, th I, I think that just shows, doesn't it, the passion in the room and uh, how much we're all loving what we're doing and the difference it's making to people. I don't know if I see me still here, but I, I think that's the point, isn't it? Is that those individual stories add up and add up and they touch our hearts um, and we carry on and we feel better too so that keeps us all going so um, I'm going to introduce uh, David and he's going to introduce me so uh, five years ago uh, Dr David Unwin was a semi burnt out semi depressed provincial GP <laughs> and the, hi the highlight of his week or day was was a little afternoon snooze <laughs> he loved a little afternoon snooze and he was he was a bit fed up waiting to retire uh, and uh, then we had a conversation uh, about that and about maybe maybe there was maybe there was a more positive way to retire maybe there was things that could be achieved and stuff that could be done uh, and also we had a conversation about working together because I also um, well, he's going to introduce me so you'll hear about that but we thought that might be fun Anyway, here we are, uh, just about four and a half, uh, five years later, and so much has happened. Uh, the main thing being that I'm now his PA. So <laughs> rather than snoozing, he's, he's off and up late into, into the night, emailing people, um, making up presentations. He speaks all over the place. He's a fantastic speaker, as you'll see, and uh, I'm so proud of him. Oh, and also he's got loads of badges and stuff from the Royal College of General Practitioners and he won NHS Innovator of the Year. Yeah. All of that has happened. All of that has happened in the last four years. He never, he's never written a paper before then or kind of, he didn't know how to do PowerPoint four years ago. I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't tell you the transformation. I'm so proud of him. No, I've got, I've got they can hear me. Yeah. So, yeah, it's true. I did actually, uh, often in an afternoon, I had a little kip on my own doctor's couch. <laughs> so I, I, ju I just put, like, you know, busy with a patient and just, just curl up on the couch. I really did often have to do that in an afternoon because carbs made me just so, so sleepy. But now to just introduce, so this is Jen. So Jen is, she's a clinical health psychologist. And psychologists... Uh, they specialise really in changing behaviour. That's what they do. They help us look at how do we change behaviour. And Jen has a particular thing. So she's fascinated by the role of hope and the difference that that makes to people's decision making. And it would be true to say that's absolutely underpinned everything that we have done is thinking about the role of hope and uh, how that impacts on the choices uh, that you make. Uh, so just moving on to why we're here, this is kind of a, a showing off session for both of us. It's very nice really because it's like we've got a family, you're all indulgent and you're going to let us show off <laughs> uh, because we're showing off about what we've done over the last, the last four years and, and some of the differences it has made. So you can see up there, there's our lovely uh, team. So um, I have a, a practice 40 miles from here. We've got 9,000 patients. And we've been implementing a low-carb approach uh, across a whole practice. And you can see everybody there. And uh, it's interesting to, first of all, show you the results of, of what you can achieve. And then, perhaps, uh, when we finish showing off, 
uh, we could share some of the things that have, have worked and, and made a difference and go a bit into some of the tricks that some of you might maybe take home and have a go with. And then finally, it's quite interesting to, to think, I wonder where next? What next? What can we, what can we achieve together? What are we going to do next? So I think that's, uh, yeah. that's what we're doing. We didn't realise we were doing anything controversial when we first started and we were surprised when, when, <laughs> when we were told it was unusual what we were doing and people told us it wouldn't work and then, then they said, oh well it might, it does work, oh it seems to work a little bit but people won't stick to it, it, it won't last and uh, then of course they said that well it's, you know, it, it, it's not going to roll out, other people won't be able to do it in that way so we're, that's sort of partly how we're structuring uh, things and the, the results we're presenting are all the results for the, for the last four years, so where are we up to now? Yeah, and those, those results, uh, we have published other papers, but the results for all of this are out at peer review, so we hope they'll be published quite, quite soon for you all. So the start of the, the showing off, if, if we just begin talking about haemoglobin A1c, uh, for perhaps not everybody knows about that, but it gives, it, it gives you an idea of how sugary have you been it's a blood test and it says how sugary have you been in the preceding three months before you had the blood test. So a haemoglobin A1c is a very good indicator of quality of uh, diabetic control and it's used as a national indicator of quality so that practices can be ranked as to how they are how they're doing and on this you want the maximum number of patients to have achieved the quality. If you look at Norwood, so we're the blue, um, the blue one there. So we started off in 2013 as below average for Southport and sadly below average nationally. But the show off bit comes, as you see moving over, we've overtaken first of all local results and then we're doing better now than the national results. So when we end up over here, Norwood is winning. Yay, we're winning. <laughs> Yeah. And, and that is a source of such, such pride, but it's also important because we can use this data to convince other people that what we do is just, isn't just an anecdote, that those anecdotes roll out and deliver, deliver results. So politicians are, are quite interested in this kind of thing. Um, so does the effect last? This is a very remarkable uh, patient, obviously. And we're looking again at the haemoglobin A1c. So this, this lady up here had fairly poor diabetic control. Uh, that was in 2011. So at that point she came off metformin, went on the low carb diet and look what happened. So her diabetic control improved and improved. She went through the threshold there so she became officially pre-diabetic. And then some years ago her haemoglobin A1c was in the normal range. And what's wonderful is, uh, so at the beginning I was often told, well, it won't last because they won't keep it up. It's very annoying and patronizing, isn't it, that? But look, she did keep it up. And the latest result was only a few weeks ago and was the best she's ever had. So that person, what a journey, and what a comparison to what could have happened if she hadn't done that, because she would have been on a lot of medication. This is a bit complicated, but it's a big show-off, really, again. So if, if, if you look here, we're looking now at... I've got a study group within the practice, a cohort. There's actually 150 of them now, but at that point, I think there was about 125. These are patients who volunteer to have an awful lot of blood tests. These are patients who will work with me and who have... They've, they've consented to share their data with you and, and the world. And the important point is that we've been doing it for four years. So you'll see there the average was 15 months. That's because people are still joining the program all the time. Uh, the, the sort of range is of the data is represented between about six months and four years and, and three months. So if we just look what has happened to those people. I've done it, the haemoglobin A1C in percent for you as well as millimoles per mole. So the, the cohort start off with pretty poor diabetic control. That is poor diabetic control. And look at that. On average, they end up as only just diabetic at all. 
and the average loss is 22.3 millimoles per mole. That is huge. That is immense. And actually what is happening underneath that figure, now about a quarter of all of the people with type 2 diabetes that start this end up in full remission, a quarter of them. And bear in mind that for the first 25 years of my career, I never saw anybody go into remission, not one. And now I'm getting a quarter of them into it, and yet and the majority are seeing great improvements. So that's a source of very great pride to me, but also the patients, imagine how they, they feel about that. They're so proud, and they don't let it go. Moving on, the, the point also, it isn't just about type 2 diabetes, it really isn't. People worry a lot about the lipid profile, so I've put the averages up there for you. This is what happened to that group of people. So the total cholesterol dropped a bit, although that is a significant drop. <coughs> Statistically, it is significant. Look at the HDL, that's the protective cholesterol. So the reason that's a minus is because it went up. And most of us doing low carb see that, that the HDL tends to rise. Even better still, look at that triglyceride. That drops a lot. That really goes down a lot. So if you look at um, the, the ratio, the triglyceride against the HDL, that improves loads. And it's a very good indicator of, of risk of heart disease. It's probably far better than the uh, LDL. And not just that, and not just that. The weight loss, so the average weight loss, I redid the figures the other day, it's jumped up, it's now 9.1 kilos, but I mean 8.6 there. That's the average weight loss. We have people still losing weight after four years. I don't know what they're going to weigh, uh, really, at the end. And I've also got people I'm having to say, you know, you've lost enough now, we need to, you know. But in my career, I've ne that's never happened before where I've said to people, you've lost too much weight, you know. <laughs> And now it, it is, it's, it's really very, very weird. Anyway, not just the weight, look at the blood pressure. So these are, again, significant amounts of systolic and diastolic blood pressures improving. And so many of the patients came off medication for blood pressure so that if you, you have to factor that in because these are people on less drugs as well. So that, again, very significant. Now, gamma GT is a liver function and this was a surprise during the four years because I didn't really know much uh, about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, but we discovered the liver function was improving so rapidly and so amazingly. Uh, and you see there a very significant improvement in liver function, and we have published um, a paper on that. Moving on. Yeah, yet more showing off. You see, if, um, if over four years you keep offering patients a choice, uh, like, you know, you have type 2 diabetes, do you, do you want to take the lifelong medication or are you up for a lifestyle? And they keep opting for lifestyle. You've probably heard me say before, not a single patient in four years given that choice, not one patient has said, give me the drugs. They don't say that. Doctors think it isn't worth involving patients in the decision-making process, but it is because they'll surprise you Every time, given the choice, the patients have opted, I'll give it a go, I'll give it a go. And if you keep doing that, look what happens. Just look what happens. So we are obviously the red practice there. And so we are now, by far and away, the cheapest practice in our area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and so it's there, you know, we're spending about £38,000 less than you would predict every year on drugs for diabetes alone. This has to be of national interest, it has to be of interest. Moving on. Um, so, uh, what, this, what this is, what is this? This is, if you look at the British National Formulary, that's how we classify all the drugs we use. And there's a wonderful system that Bennett Goldacre has set up called Open Prescribing, which is an independent thing, which is monitoring every GP in the country and monitoring our prescribing. So you can go on there and find out what is happening to your prescribing. But they, they've actually done me a special here. This is a special for me, which is looking at what has happened. In this case, confusingly, Norwood Avenue is, is red and the average of my locality is there. So this is looking at, over time, what has happened to our practice 
compared to locally. And you can see it's true, we were a cheapish practice before, but look at the difference. Every year since we started that, the difference between us and the rest is growing and growing and growing. So that is uh, immense, really. When I saw that, I was so very, very thrilled because people keep saying, oh, it's just a few patients, it's not making that much difference. Producing evidence like this, it, it is part of showing off, but we do it for a purpose um, because it helps, it helps convince all the doubting people that what we do is, is, is worthwhile. Moving on. Right, that's me. So we talked about um, the importance of the patient's experience. And of course, we're talking and we run groups all the time, so we, we hear these amazing stories. But we thought it would be nice to um, have some independent interv qualitative interviews uh, done with some of the patients so that they could um, tell someone who didn't know anything about this and also didn't have any kind of vested interest in, in, in hearing a, a, good, a good story. So um, we're, I'm very grateful to Laura O'Brien King, who, knew, who knows about qualitative interviews and who interviewed some of our patients who'd been doing this for at least three years. And she used this technique called thematic analysis, which I probably won't bore you with, but if anyone wants to know a little bit more about it, there is a paper there, or we can talk about it in the break, but for the, for the sake of kind of time. But uh, it's quite time intensive, and she had to, uh, she interviewed people for about an hour each and asked them about their experiences, how they got, how did they come to get started, what they've experienced, what's better and what, what's worse, and what's, what's helped them keep going, um, etc. And she t transcribed all those interviews, so it's quite time intensive and look for codes and so on. So uh, we're going to use some of the direct quotes um, from the patients as we illustrate what it is that, that we do and we think that works. Click. Right. Okay, right, this might look a... Okay, hang on. This might look a bit complicated, but I'm gonna explain it, it isn't really. Um, so the, the main themes are in the dark blue. So um, these are the, um, the sort of major themes that came out across all the interviews, if you like. So people talked about um, the impact that they'd noticed from following um, this, the, the low carb approach. They noticed both the physical improvements that we've talked about, um, but also improvements in their, in their well being. And I think that's incredibly powerful. It's what a lot of us notice, and I think is part of the reason that people do keep going because it's a bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? It feels so much better. Um, so they, they mentioned these, and we'll be giving you some quotes around that. Um, we're pleased really to notice that people did, did mention about their motivations and what had helped them because that gives us clues to, and you clues if you want to implement this sort of stuff in your work, you know, the sort of things that, that really make a difference to people. So in terms of getting started, it seemed really important that the GP was interested and, and gave his time and support and also the practice nurses um, and also this, this monitoring, this feed, it links into here as well, this feedback um, and also people really want to be healthier and they, and they did want to keep off medication and that's why they, they, choo <laughs> they choose to do this. And then in terms of um, keeping going, the low carb group, which we'll talk a, a little bit about and we spoke about last year, people spoke about the importance of changes, you know, this new knowledge that they had and the new information and we'll be talking about that as well. And uh, I think this is a really vital part of keeping going the feedback and support, the, the regular monitoring, the group, and the sort of social aspects of supporting each other and having that available to people uh, lifelong, really. And this is really a major thing that came out that people were saying it's a way of life. It's a way of life because they can um, kind of tailor, tailor the information to their own lives, make it their own, uh, make it their own way of life. They loved supporting others and sharing the information with other people and we often found didn't we that whole families would get involved and people would say oh you know i i told my mom and she's lost three stone and you know people love sharing this information and love sharing their positive stories um if if they get their graphs tweeted by <laughs> by, by dr romwin they they absolutely love that and they ask how many retweets did I get, you know, for my graph, uh, uh, su superstars, and they volunteered to be interviewed by Andreas and his team and so on. Um, and also this idea of 
really, I don't, I don't want to go back. I'm going to move forwards with this. Click. Almost immediately, I started to feel better. The GP reduced the medication I was on for diabetes, high blood pressure and cholesterol. Within maybe six months, I was off all medication, lost my weight rapidly and felt a lot better. Over two years, I've lost four stone, so that's amazing really. And I've gone down two clothes sizes and four ring sizes. Before, before I went on this diet, I had terrible indigestion and stomach problems. As soon as I stopped carbs, that stopped. I don't get it. You can't explain it till it happens. My mood's really, really good. You know, I don't get depressed or anything now. Because I had been overweight, still going up and up and up in weight, while my mind was going down and down, the turnaround in making me more alert and quicker on the uptake in things made it so much easier to handle my new situation of caring for people. I don't think I'm as anxious, you know, without all the sugar. That's a big thing for me. We live in a house with three flights of stairs. I can walk up and down, no problem, where, you know, I was really starting to struggle. It just happens to be, um, I don't know, like a miracle, really. <laughs> the graph just went down <laughs> with, <laughs> with all the readings down in a month. It was amazing. We're not actors, obviously, are we? But there we are. <laughs> Some quotes about what's better. And then, of course, it's important, like Asim says, you know, what, what, it's important to know what's worse for people when they're following stuff that we advise, isn't it? <laughs> Tumbleweed. And uh, uh, Laura, who, who did the interview, said to me afterwards, she, she, she was so inspired because she knew nothing about all this. And she said she did try really hard for people <laughs> to give us some stuff that was difficult or, or worse. No, uh, there, was, there was nothing. OK, so. Yeah. So now uh, you've had the, that's the end of the showing off. It went on a long time, didn't it? Uh, the sh end of the showing off. We're going to share with you now some of the nuts and bolts of how we did it. And uh, basically, it's psychological. And we've, we've divided this up. So Jen's kind of the psycho bit. <laughs> and <laughs> she's definitely the psycho bit. And, and I'm the logical bit. So we're going to do it in the psychological way. Okay, so as, as most of you know now, I'm all about uh, motivation and, and, and hope. So I, I, think, I think that has to, that has to come first. And people, people mention that in the interviews, the, import, the importance of, uh, of motivation and, uh, and, and, and the hopeful side. So we'll, we're, we're going to talk about that. Um, but also, people need new information. So motivation plus information plus feedback. Um, how are you doing? You know, how are you going to tweak that and you know that the fact that people are doing so well is incredibly then motivating um, and the support the ongoing support because we're all human we all slip up we all f fall off the wagon spectacularly at times and having that support to to come back so we we think those are the ingredients of success and as you saw that's what people also said so that's that's quite validating so I'm going to start with, with golden opportunities. My cholesterol levels were really high, and also I was pre-diabetic, which I couldn't understand because I thought I was sort of healthy. I was a bit taken aback by my results, so I said yes, and then just responded fantastically. I suppose I've had a weight problem for quite a number of years, although I wasn't really concentrating on losing weight. I went on the diet mainly because of my abnormal liver readings. So in general practice, um, it, th there's some absolute kind of key points and key conversations where uh, these kinds of things can be brought up. And so that illustrates from the, the patient point of view that they, they were kind of <laughs> ripe and ready to, to do something different, really. So we think that motivation is made up by, by these two things, really, the timing of it, the golden opportunity, and then what's important to you. So I just want to say, so often a bad result we can flip it because you can turn it into an opportunity. Um, you know, so it is, I, I have type 2 diabetes and that isn't great, but then again, I've got a choice. So you can flip it. And then I was really determined to do something about it. And really, I find patients so often 
a result is an opportunity uh, for the patient and also for the doctor. Um, even, even a bad result. So some of the best things we ever did were with people with type 2 diabetes with really bad haemoglobin A1c, something like 130. And you're beginning then to think about insulin. And that really focuses the mind and represents an opportunity. And some of those patients have done so well and made the most of that opportunity. Okay, so the other really important component, and I suppose this is, this is really, really my bit that I'm really passionate about, is that um, it's really important to get at what people's personal goals are and what's really important to them, what their personal values are, because if they can make emotional connection to that and what they're trying to do, it gives them the, the pull, if you like, into, the, into, into this sort of preferred future that they want to be in that we spoke a, a bit about last year. Um, and for those of you that were here last year or watched online, we, we know you love the role play. <laughs> I hope you love the role play because I hate it. So <laughs> but we're, we're going to do a role play where we're going to compare and contrast um, two different kinds of consultation and it's kind of building on what we did last year really. Um, so we're going to compare and contrast a traditional sort of advice giving type consultation with I would say a more hope enhancing consultation which po focuses on what's important to someone and their and their personal goals so you'll see those two and we'll kind of comment on on them at the end did you want to say something else no, we'll do that no? now okay. so you, we, i'm just going to say so you remember mrs jones who had a consultation a year ago and she'd just been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes well she's coming back for another appointment uh, unfortunately dr omin is very busy so it has taken a year to get a review appointment <laughs> with Dr. Omin. But anyway, we're doing it now. We're doing it now. So we're going to sit down to make it more realistic, I hope. <laughs> right. Oh, I need the leaflets. Uh, so, Mrs. Jones, we, uh, we met last year uh, to chat about your new diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. And I left you with a choice, really. Um, we were going to look at the low-carb diet and lifestyle or medication. What are your thoughts? Well, it was a, a, a shock, as you know, and I, I was upset, um, but I've had a good think and a uh, good chat with my husband, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try the lifestyle. I think I want to try that first. I think it's a good idea. Great, because in my opinion, that's the best way to start. I, I know you were worried about amputation and vision, things like that. Uh, <laughs> You know, there's, but there's a lot of evidence around if we can improve your diabetic control, these things, they, they don't have to happen. Uh, there's so much evidence to really moving on. Cutting out sugar, starch, that kind of thing can make a lot of difference. And I've brought you a leaflet uh, for that. There's a leaflet. Thank you. Thank you. And actually, uh, talking of, of, of lifestyle, you know, I advise exercise. So really, you should think about maybe joining a gym, running, weights that kind of thing, <laughs> cycling, you know, any, any of that. And I've got you a leaflet on that as well. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, you know, I, I, I remember that you were concerned about your feet. And we've produced a, a leaflet for feet as well. Thank you. Thank you. And then, of course, uh, on the way out, there are other leaflets. We've got uh, <laughs> mental hygiene, you know, looking after your bladder. We've got loads of stuff. <laughs> so, um, and, and then... Uh, if you'd like to take the leaflet on, on the low-carb diet, which, as I say, I really advise you uh, that you should do, and then when we next meet, you know, we can chat again about that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Ho hopefully this will be better. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so, Mrs. Uh, Jones, we, we met last year to chat, chat about your new di uh, diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, and I left you with a choice around the low-carb diet and lifestyle, or maybe, you know, medication. So, uh, I'm interested to know what you think. Yeah, I have had a, a good think, and I, I'm keen to try the lifestyle first. I, I'd like to try. Great. Great. So you've obviously given that some thought. Before we move on uh, to the, the details of it, 
given that we're going to start a process together, what, what are your best hopes for what might happen? Oh, gosh. Um, well, the main thing would be to, to not start on the medication. I, I don't like the idea of being on medication every day, forever now. And, I, I, you know, you read stuff in the paper, don't you, about side effects? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure I w you can do that, I'm sure. But what else? Oh, what else? Well, um, I have been putting on a bit of weight, so it would be nice to, certainly not to put on any more, maybe, maybe lose a bit of weight would be nice, yeah? Yeah, well, the, you know, most of the people going through this do lose a lot of weight. Oh, right. But what interests me is, is that weight loss, what, help me understand your life. What difference would it make in your life to lose that weight? Oh, wow. Well, uh, well let's think. Well, do I don't know if you know my daughter's having a, having a baby, so um, it would be nice to you know feel fit and healthy to help to help her out really like like my own mom helped me so i'd, I'd like to be a fit fit nan um like oh gosh what else um um and my husband we're just retiring now so it'd be nice to get off on you know it'd be nice to have some holidays together wouldn't it and enjoy enjoy our retirement that would be nice to have a healthy retirement that would be important so those are some really great goals so you're hoping to stay off medication mm -hmm you'd like to lose weight yep. and you're hoping that that could positively impact on your life and there's loads of fun stuff yeah. that you could do. Yeah. Uh, well, I've known you for a long time. We, we can do that, really, we can. Um, the only thing is we've got to go through the, the sugar and the starch thing. So my next thing is to help you understand uh, the difference that sugar and starch can make yeah. and we'll have another appointment on that one. <laughs> That'll be next year, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, so I hope you can. Did you see the? I mean, it's a massive contrast, and, and you know, you, you, even sitting there, you're, huh, you're bombarded by information and leaflets, and you know, maybe I already go to the gym. You know, maybe maybe I ran a marathon last year. <laughs> Uh, the doctor didn't didn't know that didn't really show any interest in in my own kind of concerns and I, I now feel I felt totally connected to my fit nan you know kind of helping my daughter out it's positive hopeful motivating and uh, I felt we were kind of in it together so that, that was good I, I've discovered that actually the more I am talking the less I am learning about the patient so you saw me in the first one uh, was a parody obviously but uh, I didn't learn anything about that human being, nothing at all, because I was so busy with me, the big doctor, I know what to do, here's the leaflet. And then the second one, um, although that was a role play, that happens to me every day where patients surprise me with details, hopes, things they're doing in their lives. But if you never ask, you never will find out. If you can incorporate those hopes and aspirations uh, into a 10 minute appointment, which really you can. It's so powerful, but so interesting and, and so rewarding uh, because that's the, that isn't that, that's kind of why we became doctors in the first place to link with people and, and, and make a difference. We need to speed up. <laughs> right, so we've d we're speeding up. So we've done, uh, we talked about motivation, and if you remember, it went motivation, information. So information, we're just going to run right. through. Information. You've heard it all before, really. So sugar, it's a really bad idea if you've got type 2 diabetes. It's a really, really bad idea. But some people cut out sugar and they still have terrible uh, diabetes. And that can be because they lack information. They often lack information around starchy carbohydrates. And I'm going to give you some information about starchy carbohydrates. Just an aside for a minute is we're all really worried about being something going wrong and officialdom coming down upon us. And it, I just want to show you, this is from the, the NICE, oh, not that. I want to show you this is from the NICE guidelines 2015. And it absolutely instructs doctors to be talking about low glycemic index, low glycemic index sources of carbohydrate and individualizing care. So it's completely fine for doctors to do that, exactly that. The trouble I found, partly, was that doctors don't actually understand the glycemic index. 
And to be honest, I didn't really either. And one of my partners said, you know, it's just too complicated. Can't you just simplify it? So what, uh, what we did, which is another paper, I got together with a carbohydrate expert and really looked into the glycemic index, but reinterpreted it in a form that we can all understand, which is teaspoon of sugar equivalents, so that everybody is familiar with what a teaspoon of sugar looks like, whereas I found that nobody really knew what four grams of glucose looked like. So that, that was trying to reinterpret the glycemic index, which talks about glucose, into uh, teaspoons of sugar. And some of you on Twitter may have seen some of these. But if we, if we look at the, these, this shows you, as it were, the glycemic consequences of some of these foods. So these are breakfast cereals. We've got five minutes left. Oh my goodness. We've got to speed up. Yeah. So look, look, they're sugary. They're very, they're all, they're all sugary. Don't. Look, what's this? Oh, bread. Oh my God, it's all sugary. Don't have it. Bread, they're all sugary. There they are. Next one. What's this? Fruit. Well, some of it's sugary and some of it isn't, and I hate bananas, and that's why. Okay, there, there's the banana. Oh. But feedback. Feedback, feedback. So, can just go back to the, 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 put that one up. Yeah. 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 Can, I, can I have a minute for the last one? Yeah. Right. Right, there you are. So, fruit varies. Raspberries, strawberries at the bottom, hardly sugary at all, but compare them to, oh my goodness, a sugar stick, a banana. Look what that does. And the people, the people with monitors know this, with blood sugar monitors, they know this. Uh, very important information in advising choice. And these are all on Twitter, uh, but we'll, we'll also put the slides up on the website as well so people can, yeah. So we talked about Motivation. Information, yeah, give people information. We run little quizzes like, what's, how many teaspoons of sugar in this banana? And people get prizes, and <laughs> it's all fun. A bit like Joanne, uh, Joanne and Tr Trudy were talking about. Um, so feedback, so people mention that. It's really important, they really value it. Because you know, you've got to go and get weighed, and it helps you keep on the straight and narrow. We don't make people get weighed, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't force them onto the scales, but we offer that at the group, and a lot of them do choose to, to do that. No, you've not done your quote. Oh, we <laughs> We've got five minutes. We've got five minutes. Okay. All right, then. We're so, so feedback's really important, and people um, just really value that. Do you want, just want to show the graphs? Then? Yeah, I just want to show the graphs. Just to show the graphs. Right. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Look at these graphs. So... <laughs> The patients, the, the EMIS computer system in general practice generates amazing graphs for patients. So easy, it's feedback. And they take it home and they become so proud. But look at this, look at this. So we've got there at the top. This was somebody that went low carb. Obviously they went low carb there. That triglyceride, look how that dropped. Like a stone, like a stone. Uh, serum HDL, that's the protective cholesterol best for 13 years. Hemoglobin A1c, oh look, in remission, diabetes in remission. Weight, so this person is the lightest they've been for 25 years. How's that for feedback? How's that for feedback? Yeah. They love these and they take them home, they stick them on the fridge and they just love that pe people love the feedback. Okay, and then finally help and support, which we already mentioned. So we, we run a group, but it's, it's easy, it's, it's, it's not, it's, we only do it once every eight weeks now. People have been coming for four years, they come, we cook food and we talk about this, the information and we support each other. Um, usually after Christmas is the main time we have to support each other to, to get back on track. Um, and people have said... Yeah. I felt like here's the GP giving me this time, and particularly it was an opportunity for me, last chance saloon really, as a man in his early 50s, to turn his life around. As a group, you can talk about and share the solutions that other people are finding that you haven't got the imagination for yourself. I'm moving on now. More graphs. Now, um, you remember the beginning was will it, will it roll out? I remember Simon Stevens talking to me once, uh, and, and he was very complimentary, but he said, you're so charming, it's no wonder people do what you want. <laughs> and, and that was nice, but really, we need this to roll out. We need this to roll out. But so just look at this, this person.
person. This is an 85-year-old lady. She lives in her own home. And her haemoglobin A1C was 135, I think, one of the worst I've ever, ever seen. You don't feel well if you have that kind of thing. Look how it drops. Look at her weight on the other side. So this woman goes dancing once a week now. Really, she does. She lives in her own home. It's so clean and tidy. She's such a smart woman. But she's not my patient. And that wasn't my work. This is somebody I've taught. This is one of my partners. And he's getting better results than me now. <laughs> Yeah, hey, well, let's give him credit. Simon Tobin is getting better results than me. <laughs> but look, but look, something even better is happening. Something even better. I think Vipan and Helen, you're here somewhere. Where are you? Yay! Yay! Stand up! 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 Come on! Yes. So this is so important because they, they've done this wonderful work, their, uh, those are their results, and they're so similar to mine. Part of evidence-based medicine is can you reproduce something? So important. Can you reproduce something? Is it generalizable to the population? Is it useful? So they work hundreds of miles away from me and they've done just the same. Amazing. So if we can, uh, we can do this again and again, and that's not the end not the end. Oh, this is another thing. Look, it's kind of snap. It looks like my drug prescribing thing, but it isn't. <laughs> They've done it again. So their drug prescribing, just the same. It's hard evidence. Moving on, moving on. It's not even uh, about doctors, really. It's not really about doctors. So we heard Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. There we are. What, so they've done, what is it, a quarter of a million? Quarter of a million. We've got Einfeld, and he's going to tell us probably that, I don't know, he's done hundreds of thousands. You go on, go on to Amazon, just, just Google low-carb book, there's 18,000 choices for you. This is huge, this is huge. You know, never mind, will it roll out, it'll never roll back. It'll never roll back, never roll back. <laughs> and... Really quickly, honestly, this is exciting. So you take, you take one of my average patients and you ask an insurance guy, how about the premiums? There they are at the bottom, the premiums. My average patient, he wants life insurance. The premiums increased by 50%. He wants critical illness, 75%. He wants insured against cancer, 50%. That is because this patient of mine has got diabetes and high blood pressure and all the rest of it. You put them through the low-carb miracle and look, the insurance premiums drop to standard for life, standard for critical illness, standard for cancer. That's amazing. These insurance people, they know about hard facts. They really do. They are not to be fooled when they tell us this kind of data. Quickly, quickly. Oh my goodness, yes. So the effect on the practice is what we were going to tell you about. And it's kind of rolled out, all right? So it's no longer about low carb because Oh my goodness, we're so run. Go on, Jen. Lifestyle. So um, we've started a, a walking group for people who who are really only just starting to take a little bit of activity, and we get out in the sunshine, <laughs> and uh, that that's us. And also, with uh, Simon Tobin, who you heard about, is is involved in Park Run, which is in the same park. So those patients who are able to come down, it's so cheerful. We all run together uh, as families, and uh, it, it's, it's about the whole package, really. It's not just about low carb. And the impact on the practice has been huge in terms of our enjoying medicine and um, carrying on. So I, I should have gone years ago, and I'm still there and reasonably lively. So it's wonderful to enjoy medicine. That's why we went into medicine. It wasn't to have a miserable time. It wasn't to become exhausted and fed up. We were hoping to make a change and, and enjoy ourselves, and I am. And I'm speeding on, I'm speeding on. This is the last, this is absolutely... This is the last this slide. Promised, Sam, so sorry. But you've got, you've got to see it, because this is one of our, it's it's one of our favorite guys. <laughs> I'll just do it. Yeah, so this is, Chris is such a superstar. Um, we just wanted to finish just some final quotes about why it's a lifestyle, not a diet. It's quite staggering when I think of what I, I used to eat and drink to where I've come now, because it's four years on and it's just a lifestyle, really. Like I say, it's a way of life. 
I think if I went back to having all those carbs regularly, I'd just go back to as I was before. I say it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. I just don't want carbs anymore. Thank you.